In this lesson, we're going to talk about static variables. Now, as you know, when a function is executed, the parameters and local variables come into existence, and then when control leaves the function, all those variables are ejected from the runtime stack. They disappear. They are no longer in existence. They go out of scope and are deallocated. Those are non-static variables. You might be thinking, well, you know, sometimes it'd be really nice to be able to retain the value from a variable in a function. You can do that with static variables. Okay, so local variables that are normal variables, non-static variables, when they go out of scope, they're deallocated, but static variables remain and they retain their value. Okay, so here's the syntax for declaring a static variable. You use the keyword static in front of the variable type and then, of course, the variable name. And we can initialize the value to whatever we want, or we cannot. If we so choose, the initialization will be automatic. So the rules for static variables. Number one, the declaration and initialization of a static variable is executed once and only once, and that happens upon the first execution of the function. The initialization will happen only once, and that will be the first time that it is executed. And unless you otherwise specify, the value will be initialized to zero. And any subsequent invocation of the function will retain the value of that variable when it was last set in the, the last execution of that function. So let's take a look at some examples. The first example here is well, kind of contrived. We have a static short that is initialized to 1. So it's created and initialized to 1 on the first execution of the function. And we have an output statement that says this function has been called count time or times. So the first execution will say this function has been called one time. Notice then that the last statement is count plus plus, so our count is incremented. So the second, end, the second execution of the function, it'll say this function has been called two times, and then the third, it'll say this function has been called three times, and then four times, and five times, etc. In our little main program here, we simply under a loop, and that's the output of that forward. Now, you might be thinking this is kind of a silly function. Yes, it is. But it may be that the number of times that the function has been called could play some important role in calculation in that function. And you can then use it for that, besides just knowing how many times the function has been called. In our next example, it's a little bit more useful. Is it larger? Here we have a function where we declare a float called largest. Uh, it's static, so it's going to persist after uh, the execution is finished executing. And we initialize to val. That means that the very first argument that is sent to this function, the very first val sent to it, it's going to be the initial value of largest. Now, in every subsequent call to the function, we say if largest less than val, then largest is assigned val. That means that we're, we're going to hold on to the largest value that is sent to this function. Each time that's going to be updated if the new argument sent is the largest. And the output statement would simply say the largest value sent to this function as far is, and then largest. OK. Here's another uh, more interesting example. Now, in C++, you have the capability of generating random numbers. We'll uh, go over that capability in a later lesson. But for right now, I'm going to build a random number generator. We need to pound include C time so we have access to the time clock. I'm going to call this function myRand. The built-in function in the compiler is rand, so you wouldn't want to call it that. It's going to return a long. We send nothing to it. We start by declaring a static long called seed. We're going to initialize it to time null. This value, and it comes from C time, is a very, very large integer. It's, I believe, the number of seconds that have passed since January 1st of 1971. That value is going to change each second, so every time this function called is called, when the program is run, then this is going to be, the seed is going to be set to a new value to begin with. Now, every subsequent call to the function 
we're going to assign to seed this constant 104729, which I'll say, I'll call, I'll call that A, this guy I'll call B, and this guy I'll call C. We're going to add to A, seed times B, and then mod it by C. And what happens is this generates seemingly random values. We'll return the absolute value of seed just to make sure that it is uh, non-negative. And uh, we have what is called a linear non-congruential uh, pseudo-random number generator. It's a function that's going to generate return uh, numbers, long integers, that are seemingly random. And it all depends on this static variable, seed, that we declare in the first place. It's going to be updated at each call to the function. And that is static variables.